So components are the primary reason of using any modern JavaScript framework in the first place, because it lets you organize code and have your concerns in one place. If you ever use classes, you can think of components as new instances of a class that can be used as a blueprint, and each of them has an independent state. So it's easy to get carried away with components and constantly trying to look at what you can turn into a component, but I advise you to not do that. So don't look for what to turn into a component, but write everything inside a single file until it becomes hard to manage and you start noticing repeating parts. So let's have a look at an example. So you might have an artist component. The artist component gets past the artist name property. The album component has the album title and album tracks property passed to album track. And the album track component has tracked and length properties but also playing state. So to visualize what I'm talking about, we can look at Excalibur. So we can see here we have an artist component that has a name property, and then we have an album component that has title and tracks, and also for each track we have an album track component that has track, length, and the playing state. So the file name can be whatever, but the capitalized tag such as the artist indicates to Swell that something is a component. To import another Swell component, you use the syntax import component as component. So in this example, we can pretend that artist is some data we fetched as a JSON response from a Spotify API, for example. So we can say script, and we're going to import in advance, and then we're going to create them. I'm going to say artist from, I'm going to say artist equals 12. I'm also going to use album from album dot and we're going to copy this data so we have something to work with. And let's loop over each of the items so we can get the artists and albums. So we can say each artist as artist. We can close the H block. And then we can use the component. So we can say artist, and we're going to pass the artist name, saying artist.name. And then we can loop over it again. So you can say for each artist albums as album. So each album of the artist we can loop over. So each. And we can use the album component. We can do it like that. And then you can say the album title is going to be album name. And we can pass it the album tracks, which are going to be album tracks. So let's create the artist component. So we can create a new component. We can say artist, we can say script. And to define something as a prop, you have to say export let artist name. And we're just going to show the artist name. Simple as that. Also, let's fix the name of the component. So it's not artist, but it's artist. So next we can create the album swell component. So we can say album, and then we can scroll here. We can create the script tag, say import album track, which we haven't created yet from album track as well. We can define the props let album title and this prop export let album tracks. We can also define a uh, displaying and then we can create a function we can send to album track to change what song is currently playing. We can say oh, stage two. So we can say album track. Oh, actually it's album title. And let me close this. And then let's create our list. Then let's loop over each album tracks as track. Let me close this. Then we can say album track. So we can pass props if they have the same name. We don't have to use the long name, like we don't have to say set playing to set playing. We can just say set playing. And that's awesome. So we can also pass playing. And then we can spread the track prop, which is going to include our other information such as length. So we can create the album track component. 
if you scroll here, we can say script, and we can say a bunch of props like export let set plane, export let plane, export let title, export let linked. So the title and length is going to be passed from the spread to track property, if you remember. So yeah, we can have it like this. And then we can say li, it has a button. We can just copy the symbol from the button. We can have a span, Let's say the title, span. And we have the length. Let's also copy this neat looking clock. We can also specify a class if the currently selected song is playing. We can do that with another directive in Svelte called class. So we can say class playing and it's going to apply this playing class if what's on the right is true. So it's playing. So if the currently song that's playing is equal to the title of the song that's playing. And then we can use the on click pass it a function and we can set set playing here by passing it the title and let's just give it some nice styles let's say playing this is the class we're going to apply so playing is going to be teal this is going to be the same class it's going to be applied here in the currently playing song equals the currently playing songs title so you can say for example we're listening to this or any of the other songs. So we can clean up the code a bit by using a reactive statement. So for example, we can go here and we can say playing if it's true, if playing equals title. And then since the name is going to match, we can just remove this and it should work the same. Awesome.